Good day folks, in this simplified setup, especially in my toy oscillator where the ground isn't completely isolated where we'd want to professionally, but for the simplicity of this experiment I had to improvise a little. And with that said, most of you will get what I, I don't even know if it's the right context to call it in this, but in normal radio we call it VSWR. So it's essentially the standing wave ratio. What happens here is um, this is essentially what similar happens as a one wire. So what I'm getting at is if you are to pulse just a coil like that at high frequency, high voltage and just disconnect it, you'll still get a spark. So the only difference is when it's just one coil being arced directly at high frequency, high voltage, what you get is essentially a potential difference against the ground during the kickback. So the difference is in this is in this state is you you send a positive spike, you get back a positive spike from the same wire essentially. And this is the one wire equivalent of an inductive kickback, okay? So in this context, what happens since we're all connected through the output at one wire, this highly reactive high Q system tends to create a very high reflection wave and essentially we capitalize on that but it also has an undesirable side effect where it essentially if you could sort of wrap your mind around this comes back down the one wire in reverse and hits the uh, transistor so there's a little rectifier on there so essentially what happens is it's not that it comes back in reverse but what happens is you get a potential it's like an antenna so all of a sudden it sees a very high voltage on its output side and because of the built-in rectification features of the transistor it sees that as a reverse voltage so the transistor essentially shunts the extra energy to ground being dissipated as heat and basically undesired if you get over threshold values the capacitor goes not the capacitor I should say the transistor goes poof right but needless to say, whether you use it or not, this is going on. So I decided why not capitalize on this energy that's otherwise being wasted. So what I've done here is on the AC rectifier side, one goes from the neon back into the rectifier's AC and the output. So the other side here of the rectifier goes into this capacitor here, which is a um, microwave capacitor. And the other side here feeds these two 110 volts AC lamps in series and then spark gaps back to ground. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the high shunted potential to ground and I'm loading it and making advantage of the load and running a lot of stuff on there. Two lamps here which run very very bright and they regulate it so no more of this wasted current everywhere lighting up neons and in this case I'm for my demonstration I'm charging supercapacitors and these things folks I've got a series set for 14 volts and when I put a car battery charger it takes about eight minutes to fill them up because they're very high farads so in this system here within moments the capacitors are charging really good without stressing the oscillator because this is working more like RF so it's giving you maximum efficiency whether you use it or not and it's doing its thing as I explained in the earlier videos but instead of just wasting essentially shunting the reflected ground energy I call it ground energy but it's not necessarily ground energy it's just the power coming back from the one wire into the system so instead of letting it uh, heat up, it's going to run these lamps. So I'm going to show you. Same little itsy bitsy toy, very low power current power. So as you see, look at now, we have the both AC lamps shining basically from my eyes at what it normally would be from the plug. It's actually lighting the table up around here. Very strong field. And I'm spark gapping. So it's the spark gap that shuns the extra energy that's being reflected to ground here and that's driving these loads here and then my super caps look at this 2.13 2.14 2.15 2.16 see how quick those things are charging that's on the regular DC side out of the rectifier here so all this is happening as a, as happening as a side effect and you can happen to tap into them and put series stuff in there and it doesn't seem to affect it very much it sustains it all. So this is still doing its thing here. There's the neon. I 
and this is the interaction. So we got we still got the primary spark gap here because we're limiting the voltage of all of this just to run the neon. And we're stepping up all this high voltage doing the filtering here with the DC rectifier here. And that's charging our 12.17, I mean 2.17, 2.22. See how quick that is? I mean, that's pretty amazing. And we're running these loads off the, and it's not even, So just some insights about how we could also recycle reflected power as well. These systems create a very high reflected power, which is usually ignored or shunted in the system. So my advice is instead of wasting it as heat, load it on something, run your lights or whatever, right? And still get the effect of charging. So I hope you enjoy just more insights and have yourselves all a great day.